We're going to the Dolce & Gabbana show. How fast can you have your bags packed for Milan? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 breaking character moments on Saturday Night Live. Sometimes we get so caught up in loving our own family we forget about <laughs> loving... <laughs> For this list, we're looking at instances where SNL hosts or cast members could not keep it together during a sketch. However, we're excluding specials and things that didn't make it into the final show. Which breaking moment always cracks you up? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Girlfriends Game Night In 2018, Bill Hader hosted Saturday Night Live for the second time since leaving the show five years earlier, and he left everyone, including his co-stars, in stitches. In this sketch, Hayter plays Horace, the elderly, wheelchair-bound husband to SNL regular Cecily Strong, who's attending a game night with her girlfriends. It's here! Let's go! It's revealed that Horace has just popped a Cialis, causing Strong to hop on his lap as the pill only lasts a couple of minutes. Hayter proceeds to use his vehicular prop to great comedic effect, ultimately causing everyone involved to break character. <laughs> later discussed the scene on Late Night with Seth Meyers and once again struggled to contain his laughter. You should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Number 19. Stefan and Shy. The brainchild of Bill Hader and John Mulaney, Stefan was introduced in 2008 and quickly became a fan favorite. New York's hottest club is Pants. <laughs> The world said goodbye to the Weekend Update correspondent, whose knowledge of New York City's most bizarre hotspots was both hilarious and unparalleled, in 2013. But since then, Stefan has still found time to make a guest appearance or two. Do people still use the word <laughs> Thank you, Sean. In 2018, Stefan resurfaced, along with his lawyer Shy, played by Mulaney, and wasted no time getting everyone to crack up, including Hader and update hosts Colin Jost and Michael Che. Hader laughs throughout the entire sketch, leading us to believe he was reading the script for the first time. How else do you explain it? Uh, and he whispered in my ear to make me laugh. He said, uh, my girlfriend, <laughs> because my girlfriend works at Yoshinoa Beef Bowl. <laughs> Number 18, Simon's Dreidel backed with Menorah in the Window. These two iconic characters have made numerous appearances over the years. Hey! Hi! Hello. Thank you. Hi. Everything okay, guys? No, we just, um... Played to perfection by Fred Armisen and Kristen Wiig, Garth and Kat are a songwriting team that just can't find time to rehearse their songs. Mountains! The mountains! The mountains! The mountains! The mountains! The mountains! The mountains! In fact, to get into character, Wiig and Armisen never rehearsed their performances, something Wiig called, quote, freeing and fun. Perhaps that's why both actors regularly burst into fits of laughter during sketches, as neither knew what to expect from the other. Watching Wig try and keep up as Armisen just wings a performance is truly amazing. It's no wonder they couldn't keep it together. <laughs> Number 17. Fernando's Hideaway with Hulk Hogan and Mr. T A recurring sketch from the 80s era of SNL involved Billy Crystal parodying Argentinian actor Fernando Lamas in a sketch called Fernando's Hideaway. I'm in the hideaway today with one of the biggest names in baseball. It's got 12 letters in it. I counted it myself. Crystal would slap on a thick Spanish accent and interview celebrities, often getting their names and other tidbits of personal information wrong throughout the interview. One of the most famous sketches saw Crystal interviewing wrestlers slash actors Hulk Hogan and Mr. T. Despite their attempts to keep a straight face, Hogan and Mr. T both break character near the end of the sketch, after Crystal ad-libs a line about exercise equipment. I was at, I was at a Hollywood party where this was an hors d'oeuvre, if you know what I'm saying to you. <laughs> it would appear that everyone is susceptible to breaking while in the presence of a gifted comedian like Billy Crystal. You know when you laugh, your little things, they go bambi, 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 bambi. Number 16, Scared Straight. This sketch from 2009 had no shortage of top-notch comedic talent. We caught these kids drinking beers behind Pathmark. Ah! Tracy Morgan, Kenan Thompson, Jason Sudeikis, Bill Hader, Andy Samberg, and Bobby Moynihan are all featured. And when that many funny people are in a room together, things are bound to get a little silly. <laughs> 
sketch saw Morgan and Thompson playing convicts, attempting to scare a trio of kids who were arrested for underage drinking. The only problem? They keep using the plots of popular movies to describe prison. All right. <laughs> Boys, learn your lesson? <laughs> Thompson and Hater are the worst offenders in this one, but everyone cracks at one point or another. You try making it through without letting a smile creep across your face, because this here is real. Number 15. Kissing Family Featuring SNL legends Andy Samberg, Kristen Wiig, Fred Armisen, Bill Hader, Kate McKinnon, Maya Rudolph, and Taryn Killam, as well as Paul Rudd, this sketch is a blueprint for how to make A-list comedic talent break character. <laughs> <laughs> The Kissing Family is a recurring skit that involves an outsider being introduced to an overly affectionate family. In this instance, the outsider is played by Killam, and he is justifiably shocked to learn that his boyfriend's family kisses each other on the lips, among other things, with zero regard for anyone else's feelings. Matt's right. Sometimes we get so caught up in loving our own family we forget about <laughs> loving... <laughs> Armisen cracks first, followed by Hater, but there are fissures of laughter peppered throughout the entire sketch. With this much talent in the room, it's no wonder this sketch devolved into a full-on breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Number 14. Family Feud Celebrity Edition – NBC vs. CBS as longtime friends and collaborators, it isn't exactly surprising to learn that Justin Timberlake does a mean Jimmy Fallon impression. So great, so great, celebrities playing games, nothing better, so fun! Am I right, man? <laughs> he got to bust it out during a 2013 appearance on SNL during a game of Celebrity Family Feud. And guess who was also playing? Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon! Are you kidding me? That is how it's done, my man! He's so great, am I right? Fallon, who is infamous for his inability to keep it together during sketches, was playing the Big Bang Theory's Jim Parsons. The two celebs went toe-to-toe -to -toe right off the bat, and immediately had to turn away from the camera to hide their laughter. So many great answers. So many. They're so great. So great, my man. But Steve. Later, Timberlake's impression was so accurate, it caused Fallon to duck behind his podium, struck by a serious case of the giggles. So great, it's classic Fallon. Number 13. Frankenstein's Monster Cracks Up The late, great Phil Hartman was a fixture on Saturday Night Live between 1986 and 1994. In that time, he portrayed a slew of iconic characters, not the least of which was his hilarious impression of Frankenstein's monster. <coughs> Tonto? Bread good, Kimosabi. In this sketch, Frankenstein's monster, Tarzan, and Tonto are being asked what they think about things like fire and bread. This naturally leads to some hilarious responses from the three famously poor speakers. <laughs> we actually have to applaud Hartman for staying in character as long as he did. However, even the best break eventually. Well, that's all the time we have. Join us next week when we'll be talking with the cavemen from Quest for Fire. Thank you. For Hartman, that moment came when he was asked how he felt about a recent nuclear arms treaty. This stuff never gets old. Number 12. Donnie's Party Introduced in 1999, the Boston teens made regular appearances during the run of Jimmy Fallon and Rachel Dratch. I would be Gryffindor. You are Hufflepuff and you know it. You are. Known for their thick Boston accents and love of the Red Sox, as well as for constantly bickering and making up, the characters regularly caused others to bust a gut. Bro. 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 One of the most infamous cases involved Boston boy Ben Affleck, who simply could not contain his laughter while at a party with the Boston teens. Watching him say bro over and over again while struggling to keep it together is priceless. Naturally, Fallon couldn't keep a straight face either. Number 11. Career Day Adam Driver helped SNL kick off their 44th season with a handful of hilarious performances that all deserve their time in the spotlight. However, this list is about actors breaking character, so we'll focus on just one. Career Day. Look at your father, boy. <laughs> Look upon your father with pride. I see you, man! In the sketch, Driver plays an elderly and ruthless oil baron who visits his son's class for career day. Now what does an oil baron do? The answer? 
Crush your enemies! <laughs> Grind their bones into dirt! Pete Davidson plays the son, and boy is he ever put through the ringer. Driver delivers a blistering performance, causing Davidson to break character on multiple occasions, including the first time he's addressed. I am From there, it's all downhill for the young actor, as Driver never once falters in his performance. Dad, come on! Number 10. Close Encounter It was clear from the first minute of this sketch that host Ryan Gosling was not going to make it through without breaking character. Uh, I came to and saw a beautiful being made of like a beautiful calming light. Yeah, same here. That being touched my head, I felt every emotion in its purest form. After being abducted by aliens, Kate McKinnon, Cecily Strong, and Gosling each recount their experience with the extraterrestrials. I started peeing and uh, one of the gray aliens slapped the wall and pointed at the bowl. So I got the hint, I kind of ducked, walked over the bowl, peed in it. Yes, I, I see. However, McKinnon's version differs wildly from the other two. So much so, in fact, that Gosling was basically stifling a laugh for the entire sketch. Strong, Bobby Moynihan, and A.D. Bryant all eventually broke, and even McKinnon had to repress a laugh at one point. Later in the episode, Gosling fell victim to a hilarious performance by A.D. Bryant, whose portrayal of a boundaryless teenager caused him to once again break character. Wow, I guess everyone knows how dirty I am. Do you like that, Mr. Dillham? Actually, no, I do not like that, okay? <laughs> That's disgusting. Number 9. Super Showcase Kristen Wiig and Maya Rudolph took a forgettable game show sketch and elevated it to new heights with their hilarious fake European accents. Show Deborah what was in her showcase. Bad news, Deborah. You didn't win his and hers matching luggage by luggage guy. If it's not luggage guy luggage, it's just a bunch of luggage from some place. The two SNL alumni play off each other beautifully, though that means as soon as one breaks character, the other isn't far behind. <laughs> You love golf! You love the next prize! You did a win! Things start to spiral out of control when the two women roll up in a golf cart. While Wig immediately catches a case of the giggles, Rudolph manages to stay in character a little longer. You'll be a real swing at this! It's a guy's matching golf clubs by golf club guys! <laughs> Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for Bill Hader, who has to hide behind his hands to contain his laughter. The whole thing culminates with a still laughing wig crashing through the set in a golf cart. Seriously, how do they come up with this stuff? It's always time to close the front box. <laughs> Number 8. Love Us in the Hot Tub. Surprise, surprise. A sketch featuring Will Ferrell and Jimmy Fallon ended in multiple people breaking character. Barbara, what brings you to the prestigious Wednesday Arms? The usual. Quiet strolls, family-style dining, archery. This iconic bit saw Farrell and Rachel Dratch playing overly affectionate lovers soaking in a hot tub and trying to play matchmaker to Fallon and host Drew Barrymore. Dave. 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 David. <laughs> well, as you can probably glean from Farrell's ridiculous costume, it didn't take long before everybody was on the verge of a full-on meltdown. Barbara Hernandez is the top female archer in the Northeast Division. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Tack on the fact that Farrell later admitted that the goal was to, quote, make Jimmy Fallon laugh, and you have the recipe for a sketch that's guaranteed to have multiple broken characters. Need more proof that Farrell is a character-breaking machine? Check out his short shorts for the USA clip. You are welcome. I guess what it all comes down to is that the angle of my dangle is inversely proportional to the, the heat of my meat, right? Number 7. Right to Extreme Stupidity In this iconic sketch, SNL legend Gilda Radner and host Candace Bergen prove that breaking character is as easy as flubbing a single line of dialogue. You're not too bright, are you, Fern? I mean... <laughs> Whatever your name was. <laughs> the slip up occurs when Bergen accidentally refers to Radner as Fern, which is actually the name of Bergen's character. While Bergen attempts to rectify her mistake, Radner uses her trademark wit to destroy her, quipping, We all can't be brainy like Fern here. 
At this point, all pretense of finishing the sketch as planned has gone out the window, as both women are dying of laughter. Extremely stupid people are discriminated against all the time. And I should know, and so should Fern, because we are. <laughs> it's moments like this that make SNL so much fun to watch. Number 6. Happiest Place on Earth? Debbie Downer is one of the funniest characters in SNL's prestigious repertoire. Brilliantly brought to life by Rachel Dratch, Debbie can instantly transform any situation into a total bummer. For the other characters, that is. Roy of Siegfried and Roy. He was attacked by his own tiger and suffered devastating injuries. As far as the audience, cast members, and viewers at home are concerned, she is a riot. One of her most famous appearances occurred at Disney World, where she somehow managed to ruin the happiest place on Earth with her depressing anecdotes. While Fallon breaks first, shocker, Dratch is not far behind. I can't have children! <laughs> this inevitably caused the whole table to crack up. Horatio Sands cries, and Lindsay Lohan bangs the table in a fit of laughter. All the while, Dratch can barely keep it together. Number 5. Cork Soakers. In this hilarious sketch from 2004, host slash musical guest Janet Jackson visits a winery and learns how to soak corks from a group of Italian winemakers. The scene is littered with double entendres meant to have viewers in stitches. As you can see, we are soaking all the corks in this room right now. <laughs> These three guys right here are some of the most talented cork soakers. However, as the writers probably assumed when they penned this side-splittingly funny sketch, it was the actors who were laughing harder than anyone. So how did you learn to sort corks? <laughs> so corks. With giggles emanating from all corners of the set, Jackson can barely get her lines out. And honestly, we feel for her. So does your wife like soaking... <laughs> soaking corks? Well, she used to when we were dating. Now, not so much. However, the biggest surprise was that perpetual character breaker Jimmy Fallon stayed composed throughout the entire sketch. Number 4. I Live in a Van Down by the River Few comedians are as revered as the late, great Chris Farley. He could make anyone break with his unique brand of physical humor, and often did. I am 35 years old, I am divorced, and I live in a van down by the river. <laughs> While he has a slew of iconic SNL characters, you'd be hard-pressed to put any of them above Matt Foley, motivational speaker. Brian. From what I've heard, you're using your paper not for writing, but for rolling doobies. In the character's first Saturday Night Live appearance, Farley managed to break host Christina Applegate and SNL regular David Spade in seconds with his over-the-top performance, which included hoisting Spade into the air and warning the teens about ending up like him. He broke everyone else the moment he screamed, I'm sick and tired of living in a van down by the river! Number 3. Jeffries. In this 2001 sketch, host Sean Hayes joined Jimmy Fallon and Will Ferrell in their Jeffries sketch, which sees the three men playing retail workers at a high-end clothing store. Yeah, look, we don't carry diesel. We work at Jeffries. We read Italian Vogue. It's our deal. The gag involves them being extremely rude and condescending to customers who they deem unstylish. True to form, Fallon is laughing before the skit even begins. This is a genuine Looney Tunes jacket. <laughs> Hayes breaks shortly thereafter, and for the rest of the sketch, the two men can barely contain their laughter for more than a few seconds. Once Will Ferrell appears on a motorized wheelchair, this sketch is over and done with. We're going to the Dolce Gabbana show. How fast can you have your bags packed for Milan? <laughs> I've got my Jack Speed bag packed already. Oddly enough, this isn't the first time a clothing-based sketch involving Horatio Sands and Jimmy Fallon devolved into one giant character break session. We give you the Leatherman. I always treat the customers with. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense, really. <laughs> Number two, more cowbell. Featuring vets like Will Ferrell, Jimmy Fallon, Chris Kattan, Chris Parnell, and Horatio Sands, not to mention the indomitable Christopher Walken, more cowbell is the stuff of sketch comedy legend and was so the second it began to air. Are, are you sure that was sounding okay? I'll be honest, fellas, it was sounding great, but. I could have used a little more cowbell. <laughs>
The cast plays Blue Oyster Cult, while guest Walken portrays record producer Bruce Dickinson, a man who has a fever for more cowbell. Watching Farrell gesticulate all over the room in a shirt that is way, way, way too small is absolutely side-splitting. I'd be doing myself a disservice and every member of this band if I didn't perform the hell out of this! Walkin' breaks, Catan breaks, Sands breaks, Fallon breaks, even Farrell breaks. In the pantheon of SNL's worst or best character breaks, this one takes the cake. Or, as the case may be, the cowbell. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Stefan on Halloween You all knew Stefan would be back at number 1. In this all-time moment, fan favorite Stefan stops by Weekend Update to advise partygoers on where to find some not-so-family fun on Halloween. Located in an abandoned white fish factory in Little Israel. <laughs> Bill Hader breaks character numerous times, something he'd replicate in an autumn-themed appearance a couple of years later. Needless to say, this place has everything. Skunks, K-Fobs, Cookie Crisp, Dan Cortez. <laughs> As one YouTube commenter points out, it makes you wonder whether Hater developed Stefan's signature hand-over-mouth quirk as a way to hide his constant giggling. Well, they have a Jewish Dracula. Oh. What's his name? Sidney Applebaum. Okay. <laughs> Throughout the clip, Hater finds himself unable to speak, overcome by laughter. And while Seth Meyers does his best to remain composed, he is far from invincible when it comes to keeping a straight face. You know you've come up with comedic gold when Hater is crying tears of laughter. Enjoy, folks! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.